The other point that Patricia raised that has become a part of standard practice is, is looking at, at for antibodies, aquaporin, for IgG, and, and anti-MOG. I think that, that when the aquaporin 4 IgG assay came out, I think it was around 2006 or thereabouts, I think we did find people who would be carrying this MS who actually had NMO, and it was the concept of NMO spectrum. So they weren't the classical Devix disease that was putting a disas disastrous disorder. But what we learned that the NMO spectrum can be considerably milder and had some overlap with MS. I don't see that happening so much anymore, as opposed to, I think that syndrome is much more clearly recognizable now that we've expanded things, looking at the, the brain, the lower brainstem lesions, the longitudinal extensive spinal lesions. The MOG patients are, for me, a little more concerning because I'm not entirely clear which are a syndrome and which are resultant from having inflammation in the central nervous system. And I think the overlap, uh, in fact, I think MOG kind of sits right in between you know, NMO, NMO and MS and kind of overlaps with both. And this one's causing us uh, uh, some more thought and concern. Thoughts? I mean, based on the pathophysiology, one would assume that anti-MOG uh, disorders are directed against oligodendrocytes. So it should be more in the spectrum of multiple sclerosis, in my opinion, compared to um, aquaporin, which is obviously expressed on astrocytes. That's a very good point. Other thoughts to distinguish them and trying to figure out when it's pathogenic and when it's not. Yeah. Well, I, I think, think first, I think the first thing we need to do is really assign what populations are MOG positive, what syndromes are MOG positive. Some of them are transient, transient, very common in post-infectious encephalomyelitis, ADEM. A good proportion of them fade away and disappear. But if the MOG antibodies persist, then that ADEM patient is at increased risk for recurrent later optic neuritis. And this might also be the reason why we have, uh, I think, 20% of MOG positive children, where it's from the very beginning not so easy to distinguish between relapsing inflammation, so MS, or um, monophasic disorder. I do think, though, that the syndromes associated with MOG uh, spectrum or uh, MOG IgG are becoming clearer, just like it took some time for the full spectrum of uh, NMOSD associated with aquaporin 4 antibodies to become clear. I think we are getting better at recognizing the sorts of patients who are likely to have MOG antibodies. For example, people with unilateral or bilateral optic neuritis in which there is prominent um, optic disc swelling or prominent pain or the patient with transverse myelitis where there's uh, a long lesion involving the conus. These are some um, clinical situations where the suspicion for uh, MOG IgG is high. 